Go ahead. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> I was I was like, should I say take two? Should I say start over? Ah, we're gonna. Oh my God, the plane's going down. <laughs> we're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, you were you were killing me. Welcome to Two Designers Walk Into a Bar. A place where pop culture creatives discover design icons that make us tick. And we share a few cocktails in the process. Yep. Today, our conversation centers around sticky, tasteless cardboard. If that description reminds you of the bubble gum that accompanies trading cards, well, you're not too far off. But instead, we will be talking about two of our favorite novelty card series from the 70s and 80s. So get your mitts on some collector's guides and a six pack of forgettable wine coolers. It's time to kick open the door as we roll back into the bar. So Todd, I have some novelty cards today that I'm really, really, really am excited to talk about. And these are direct children. These cards are, are the children. I can draw a straight line back to the publication we love so much, mm. Mad Magazine. Yes. Yeah. So are you talking are you talking about wacky packages? No. Although I love wacky packages. Oh, okay. I do too. How much that's do you love jam. wacky pa- What? You're I, doing wacky packages? My, yeah, I know. Can you believe that? Um so yeah, I mean that was that was my jam when I was a kid. What did, so what are you talking about? I am talking about the definitely irreverent in the eighties, still around today, garbage pail kids. Oh man, see I don't know hardly anything about that other than um it was you know, kind of a rip on the uh on the cabbage patch kids. Um I was too busy being in college and stuff so i don't know much about that but but i do know about wacky packages and they're made by the same company right yes they were both made by tops not only were they both made by the same company they were really both products of the same brain trust yeah yeah so um credit where credit is due i think you and i both need to start at the beginning and talk about the father of both wacky packages and Garbage Pail Kids, Art Spiegelman. The great. Yes. The great Art Spiegelman. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, born from uh, the underground comics movement, wasn't he? Yes. That, um, which was kind of cool. And I think some of the other tops players were also of that same time. Jay Lynch, Bob Stewart. Um, and probably some of the Mad Magazine artists were also involved with uh, both wacky packages and garbage pill kids. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to get into all this stuff. And I think what I like, and I think you'll appreciate this and agree with me on this, Art Spiegelman is the perfect blend. If you can think of an artist, he is the perfect blend of high and lowbrow culture. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy has won a Pulitzer Prize. No kidding. Yes, for Mouse, if you recall his graphic novel Mouse, which is about the yeah, Holocaust. Right. But then he also did Wacky Packages. <laughs> that's, that's right. So a little bit of everything, um, which is amazing. He sounds like someone we need to know better. <laughs> yeah, we need, to, we need to go hang out with him. Yeah. So, of course, when he was in school, Todd, guess who influenced him? Oh, you you are taking too long to answer this question. It's Go the ahead. same yeah. people who influenced us, the usual gang of idiots. Uh, oh, okay. who later became yeah. his coworkers at Mad Magazine. Oh, no kidding. Okay, yes, um, yeah, like the Stan Hart, Jack Davis guys. You got it. You got uh, it. Mort, our, uh, Mort Drucker. Yep. Who is to blame for us starting this podcast, right? Yes, yes. But for those of you out there who are cursing Mort Drucker's name because you're listening to our voices now, it is not kind to speak ill of the dead, okay? That's, so you need that's to stop. right. That's right, right. 
it was, and then I will say it was our love of Mort Drucker that yes. brought us together to start talking about stuff like wacky packages and garbage pail kids, as well as the love of wacky packages and garbage pail kids. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so great jumping off point. I had hundreds of these wacky package stickers, and man, what I wouldn't give to have them again today. They so Tops was producing baseball cards and, and other athletic cards, and they started in 1967 doing wacky packages, which were product parodies, and they did that till about 1976. Um, probably when I was really into it was right around the height of the popularity, which was 73, 74, you know, 75. And um, what we were just talking about with um, the influence of Art Spiegelman on so many things out there and, and, and being a part of Tops and Wacky Packages and Garbage Pail Kids, it was this underground comics movement that these artists were all part of um, kind of in their off time and some in their day job were designing these product parodies. And a little bit of interesting kind of takeaway there, I didn't realize how much Tops was in other things uh, as well, well as responsible for other things that the uh, Tops art director, a guy named Woody Gelman and Lynn Brown, his creative partner, they also created Bazooka Joe for Tops, did you know that? I think that was the very first thing Tops did outside of sports trading cards. Was Bazooka oh, Joe? Was yeah, it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they wrote those, you know, kind of really corny three-panel comics. But wasn't it because they Tops switched from including like trading cards, baseball cards, and so forth? They were originally with tobacco, and mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. they switched to bubble gum. And so, mm -hmm. you know, obviously there's the Bazooka brand and Bazooka Joe. And so I think this was a natural thing for them to kind of launch and extend this brand. Yeah. So interesting that Bazooka Joe and the, the, the rapper, the comic, uh, became a little extra reason to buy the gum. It was the opposite for wacky packages. I don't know if it was the same for Garbage Pail Kids, but most often people threw the gum away. They just wanted the stickers so that would come with the gum. So yep. uh, the gum was nothing special at no, all. No, not at all. Were really no, cool. especially if the packages had been hanging around for a while at the store. Uh, right, the gum right. was really nothing like special at that point. Yeah, they did. Um, you know, another funny thing about Tops. Um, I didn't know this, Elliot. You may know this. They are also responsible for a, a card series called Mars Attacks which a movie was made. Tim Burton made a really cool movie in 1996, and it was inspired by trading cards. I had no idea. I didn't either. I knew about the movie, of course, but I had no idea what it was based on. I had assumed if it was anything, it was a comic book. I had no clue it was trading cards. Yeah, same here. So it was basically a comic book in small card format that was delivered, you know, over a long period of time. But if you go back and look at some of those, the characters look exactly like they do in the movie, which was really interesting. And I think it was that kind of that sort of underground still thumb your nose at the man um, that really interested me in wacky packages again because if you think about it at the time which was again early mid 70s products were really doing well in the advertising space they were really jumping out there and I would say that not all of the advertising was advertising that um, you know was going to win awards this was a time when well, before this, I, I, I don't know when they stopped advertising cigarettes, but it was around that time. But you would see ads with Santa smoking cigarettes. And so it was a little bit of a less authentic take on advertising. And what Wacky Packages did was they sort of took the piss out of these products. Um, that's what we say in, in, in the UK. We say taking the piss because, you know, we just can't let them get bit too big. I don't want a bunch of products with piss in them. Especially if they're mouthwash and, and things like that. Well, so that's why you have to take it out. Um, but they became hugely popular. And um, I saw this quote from Jay Lynch, who was another sort of constant thread that went through all of this with Art Spiegelman. And he was recalling how they used to work. And he would usually submit about a dozen roughs 
at a time for a series. And they did something like 16 series throughout that, their period of uh, eight, nine years. And uh, what a rough was, was an India ink and magic marker drawing. And it was just, he would look at products of the day, go to the supermarket and kind of just make up funny shit about them. They would pay him like a eh, small amount. He said in the 60s, he got about eight bucks a rough. By the 70s, it had gone up to 20 bucks. And then by the 80s, it was like 125 and so on. I'm sure by the time he was doing Garbage Pail Kids, he was doing a little bit better than that. But um, what I think is funny, and this is a quote he says, one rough pays about the same as a week's worth of groceries. Always has and always will, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. <laughs> I think that's how William Gaines would pay the guys at Mad as well. Yeah, probably. Um, and, you know, Obviously, products did not apply to be made fun of. They had a master list of products to not parody based on uh, cease and desist letters that they would get from prior sales. So they would create a, a parody of something, get a cease and desist letter, and then like, okay, well, we can't do that one again and move on to an <laughs> another one. So they would have this master list going all the time. It's really funny, you know, thinking about a couple things with that. Um... If I remember correctly, they took no prisoners in the sense of there was a bazooka wacky packages sticker as well. So they were even yeah, making fun yeah. of the own products, their right. their own products within tops. <laughs> yeah, just like, you know, Mad Magazine always did. They 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 never claimed to be literary giants, which made them so popular and so endearing to me as a kid anyway. Well, um with regard to cease and desist, you never know when somebody is going to object or not until you sort of make their product. So you really don't have a choice. I mean, it's one thing to do it innocently when you don't know they would object to it. It's another thing to keep going after that. Yeah. But in a way, it reminds me of, I would think, if I were a product and Wacky Packages parodied my product, I would almost think I've made it because my product is now part of the zeitgeist. It's really... Mm -hmm popular culture like if it's obscure and it gets made fun of no one's going to get the joke mm -hmm. but if it's everywhere and it gets made fun of it almost legitimizes its popularity and ubiquity in a way wouldn't you think yeah i would and i wonder if this uh this gang of uh usual idiots if they uh if they wouldn't be happy um with getting cease and desist letters you know like if if they didn't hear from procter and gamble or something they would probably think we're not doing our job right yet <laughs> or or the the parody missed right it wasn't close right, enough to right. home to make the uh the real manufacturer uncomfortable right right and um so we're going to put some links on our site uh, there are there are gallery sites there are homage sites to wacky packages as i'm sure there are with uh, Garbage Pail Kids, and there are hundreds of these, and uh, all of them are great. They're all a play on the name of some kind, the name of the product, and then um, probably a little bit of a, of a rip on the product's tagline or something. My favorites, my personal favorites, are Crust Toothpaste, um, which is garlic flavored, uh, which, you know, sounds wonderful. <laughs> uh, and, and then another one, uh, because they, they, they went outside of products, too, and went into restaurants. Um, they parodied um, one called Kentucky Fried Fingers, uh, which were, <laughs> you know, fried fingers uh, in, in, that came in a KFC bucket. And the tagline, I love this tagline, is, it's chicken licking good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's amazing. So, okay, so that's a little bit about, they went on to do some reissues in the late 70s and, um, and then in, through the mid 80s to the 90s. And then in, even in the 2000s, they did some old school ones. But I want to know a little bit more about Garbage Pail Kids because, as I said, I sort of knew they existed, but I really didn't connect it to uh, Wacky Packages. You weren't collecting uh, Cabbage Patch Kids in the 80s when you were in college? Uh, n no. Um, no, I definitely wasn't doing that. But <laughs> but you probably were. That's why you were probably into Garbage Pill Kids, right? 100%.
Todd, you mentioned taking the piss out of some of these products. Yep. That's giving me an idea. Well, my guess is the listeners can connect those dots on their own. Okay, folks, let's take a break for a few minutes. Noses will be powdered, drinks will be freshened, and we will meet back around the bar in just a few minutes. Hi, while we have your attention, if you want to learn more about us and the podcast, there are a few ways to do it. Visit our website at two designers walk into a bar.com. All of that is spelled out. No numbers. Kind of a long URL, so do yourself a favor and bookmark it. Once you're there, you can find links to more information about the subjects in this episode, our episode archive, and information about both of us. Wait, we do want people to visit, right? <laughs> well, oh, and look for us on social media. You can find those links on our website as well. And while we're at it, if you have a friend who you feel will dig on our rambling... Tell him or her what we're up to. While we can't guarantee that they will remain your friend, we can guarantee that they will listen to at least 30 seconds of whatever episode you send them the link to. <laughs> That's being a little shameless. And speaking of being shameless, it wouldn't be a proper ask if we didn't mention that if you like what you hear, you can also make a donation via our website. We have a Nigerian prince handling all transactions for us. In fact, he told us to mention that we have stickers to mail to anyone who donates $10 or more. Are we done? We're done. We're done. So, Garbage Pail Kids. Just like Wacky Packages, Garbage Pail Kids were a collectible novelty card series from Tops. Um... Although they came along about 10 or so years later. And there's an interesting origin story here. Couple different things. I feel like I need to start with Cabbage Patch Kids because some people listening probably don't even know what Cabbage Patch Kids are. Mm -hmm. So in the mid 80s, there was this doll line, collectible doll line, that was incredibly popular. And when I say incredibly popular, I mean parents rioting at toy stores to get their hands on these things for their kids. Popular. <laughs> okay. This is, again, pre-internet. Yeah, yeah. Pre-internet, pre-Amazon, whatever. So you had to show up if you wanted something. Kind of, I guess, the equivalent today would be when Apple releases a new iPhone, of course, pre-COVID, when you would have all these people lining up and... They would run out and they would hold the new iPhone over their head and everybody in line cheers. <laughs> it's that same sort of thing, except it would be a hairy eyeball from all the other parents because they probably then weren't going to get a, a Cabbage Patch Kid. I almost said Garbage Pail Kid. Freudian slip. So anyway, with anything that is popular, there is, of course, a backlash. And my brother and I were firmly in the backlash camp. We thought these things were lame we didn't understand why people were going ape shit over them we thought these people were crazy so again these were beanie babies before there were beanie babies these were american girl before there was american girl these things were soft featured plastic headed rustic plush dolls started in the late 70s under a different name we won't get into the history of that you guys can research it if you like and then they were exploded out of a cannon into the united states in the early 80s as cabbage patch kids they even went outside of our borders they gained international popularity before largely dying out by the decade's end but as any enterprising company will do which i believe at this time may have been coleco um mm -hmm. There was an awful tie-in with the 1992 U.S. Olympic team where every athlete was given a doll to take with them to the Olympics. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. So th this just sort of gives you an idea of the horribleness that Topps was trying to counteract. They were ripe for the picking. God bless him. So, but here is the other interesting part of this story. Topps saw the Cabbage Patch Kids' popularity, and they actually approached them and said, hey, would you be willing to let us do a line of cards, maybe for the kids who 
can't afford all of these dolls, they can still have pictures of the dolls with the dolls' names, and they'll be on these cards. Mm -hmm. And Cabbage Patch Kids basically said, "Ah, we're not in the low-price product business, so you guys can go pound sand. You know, no. <laughs> like, this is, this is like, totally beneath us. Tri you know, trading cards, novelty cards, totally beneath us. No, to hell with it. And so Tops, of course, with wacky packages having been in their back pocket, they shrugged and said, okay, fuck you. We'll go and make a parody of the Cabbage Patch Kids, right? So they came out of the game. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So then they came out loaded for bear, right? So God bless them. <laughs> Cause, uh, I love that. I would say more people remember Garbage Pail Kids, actually, than Cabbage Patch Kids. I think you're probably right. Yes. So what are Garbage Pail Kids? So basically, again, trading card size sticker, essentially, just like Wacky Packages. So the front side of the card had an illustration with a character that always looked like a slightly quote-unquote off Cabbage Patch Kid. Along the bottom, the names would be puns of traditional first names. So, like, you would have mm -hmm. Adam Bomb, spelled A-D-A-M. Mm -hmm. And then that doll would be pressing the button of a detonator while his head is exploding in a giant mushroom cloud. <laughs> or another one of my favorites was... <laughs> Stormy Heather, which was a girl in a raincoat getting hit by lightning outside. <laughs> uh, yeah, because the well, because Cabbage Patch Kids they came named. When yes, you bought one. It already had a name. It so, had a name and, and a had an adoption certificate. certificate. And, yeah, yeah, it had. All, it was just there was so much cheese there yeah. that these guys, you know, the jokes almost write themselves, right? So. All of this first series was illustrated by a single guy, this guy named John Pound. Mm -hmm. And to get more mileage out of the artwork, each piece of art was actually used twice. So there was an A series and a B series, and each series used a specific name. So each piece of art would have an A name and a B name. Huh. So that gave you twice as much stuff to collect. Huh. And while Cabbage Patch Kids existed in this sort of frozen-in-time dream world, Garbage Pail Kids were firmly a part of the dystopian, the Russian bombs could fall at any moment, go-go Wall Street 1980s. Right. I would say shamelessly so. And that, right, right. I think, is what made them work, really plugging into pop culture in an of-the-minute kind of way. And then on the backs of these cards, I can't remember. I had wacky packages when I was a little kid, too. Believe it or not, my parents introduced them to me. Oh, yeah. But they also introduced me to Mad Magazine, so it only sort of makes sense. Well, yeah, that's that's good parenting right there. It is. It is. So the card backs of uh, Garbage Pail Kids had, like, these spoof certificates that you mentioned, like these adoption certificates or spoof mm -hmm, awards mm -hmm. that these people won or didn't win or whatever, likely making fun of these adoption certificates. But other ones were actually pieces of a giant puzzle, almost like a mosaic, right? So if you're mm -hmm. a kid mm -hmm. and you're collecting these packs, you want to complete the puzzle. So you're going to go buy as many packs as you can to complete the puzzle. And the puzzle back was typically like a giant garbage pail kid sort of illustration. You know, that was maybe mm -hmm. comprised of, I don't know, like 16 or 20 cards or something like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, Todd, you talked about lawsuits. I think this, you know, maybe our podcast should just be about creative lawsuits because yeah, it seems yeah. like everything that we love, <laughs> there is always at least one lawsuit involved. So naturally, right. when Tops had approached Cabbage Patch Kids, Cabbage Patch Kids turned them down. Uh, Tops retaliates with the Garbage Pail Kids. Cabbage Patch Kids naturally file a lawsuit against Tops, claiming copyright infringement and brand reputation damage. So I will say this. <laughs> they, did, they didn't think putting out those like creepy, squishy dolls damaged their reputation enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it was, yeah, there wasn't the, yeah, it wasn't like the creep factor or whatever. I you guess know? there goes that sponsorship opportunity for our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Sorry, plush doll manufacturers. We are yes. just not interested. Um, but I don't remember. I, I think it was there was some sort of settlement because obviously Cabbage Patch Kids are still around. Garbage Pail Kids are certainly still around. Mm -hmm. uh, and so whatever. So who were involved with these things? So we talked about Art Spiegelman. We talked about this idea of 
high and low culture that you and I both love so much. Taking something that is out there in the landscape and parodying it. So basically, Spiegelman and this other cartoonist named Mark Newgarden worked together as the editors for the project. So they were the ones who were coming up with the funny names and all these sorts of things. John Pound, as we mentioned, um, was the one who did all of the illustrations. Then they started to rope in all these other guys, kind of like Mad Magazine. So you may be familiar mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. some of these names. Jay Lynch, Tom Bunk, and right. a certain illustrator named James Warhola. And if that uh-huh. name rings a bell at all, <laughs> that was Andy Warhol's nephew. Yeah, yeah. Right? Interesting. How funny. Yeah. So Andy Warhol's nephew was one of the folks involved with Garbage Pail Kids. Now, wow. get this, but wait, it gets even better. So the Cabbage Patch Kids, as I mentioned, exploded from a cannon, went beyond our borders, and were sold internationally. So Garbage Pail Kids, not to be outdone, were also popular internationally. Now, I need to give you some of the translated names for what Garbage Pail Kids were called in some other parts of the world. Are you ready? Oh, this will be good, yeah. Yeah, okay. So in Japan, they were known as Mr. Creepy. That was the brand name. <laughs> yeah, this is, these are all the brand Not names. Garbage pill kids. Yeah, Mr. Creepy. <laughs> in Australia, New Zealand, Spain, and Israel, they were known as the Garbage Gang. The Garbage Gang. The Garbage Gang. The Garbage Gang. <laughs> in Latin America and Brazil, they were the Trashlings. <laughs> uh, hey, I love their second album, the Trashlings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, in Italy, they were called the Snotlings. <laughs> <laughs> in France and Belgium, they were the Filthies. <laughs> and in Germany, and this is such a German name, they were the Totally Broken Kids. <laughs> <laughs> the Totally Broken Kids. <laughs> the children who are the broken ones. The children who are the broken ones. And I can see them shaking their heads. Yes, yes, yeah. They but they not buying. The probably they, they were, they were uh, all in black and white, though. In Germany. (laughs) Yes. So additional pop culture imprint. So what, you know, the Garbage Pail Kids at this point, they've taken on a life of their own, right? Right. So naturally, what do you do? You got to monetize. You got to strike while the iron's hot, Todd. I don't know about you, but that's, that's what good business people do. Well, it sounds like good business advice. It is. It is. So live action movie, you got to do that. 1987. Really? Total total flop total oh, flop okay. no wonder i didn't hear that yeah yeah you were you were again you were busy you were in college yeah um 1 million dollar budget made 1 and a half million dollars total globally wow. so total okay. flop the same year they were going to release an animated tv show like a children's tv show uh-huh. but there were so many parental complaints that it was shelved and it was never <laughs> aired until years and years later. And then, of course, oh you God. know, the bloom was off the rose and it never went anywhere. Right, right. And then, of course, I don't think any discussion of Garbage Pail Kids or Cabbage Patch Kids would be complete without talking about the horror movie Child's Play with the possessed good guys brand doll Chucky. <laughs> right? So that's, uh, of course. Yeah. yeah of course. So that's far more, I think, along the lines of what Garbage Pail Kids was all about. And in fact, I think that's the better movie than the Garbage Pail Kids movie. <laughs> well, yeah, you might be. God, I would love to get my hands on a on a copy of the Garbage Pail Kids movie and just see how bad it is. Well, good uh, news. I found the trailer. We, all right. We will have a link to the trailer on our episode page. And Todd, if you still want a copy of the full Garbage Pail Kids movie after you watch the trailer, Uh I will get it for you. (laughs) We will find it. I will also get you some psychiatric help because if you still want it, there are far bigger problems than your lack of taste because this movie looks like it is absolutely horrible. The fact that it even made one and a half million dollars is astonishing to me. So you know what's funny? Like you talked about the uh, the the influence that the Garbage Pail Kids cards had. Um, they went into um, movies and animation, not successfully. Um, but you gotta you gotta see that even today, like 
um, the influence of those parodies, and I'm thinking now wacky packages, they're felt today in memes uh, and parody Instagram accounts that you see every day. Like yep. Some of my favorites that I love, and I think you share this too, uh, Worst Buy, uh, which is obviously a takeoff of Best Buy, um apple product parody is the name of an account which you know is is almost believable as an apple product uh account and then another one of my favorites not a product parody but shithead steve i don't know if you uh, <laughs> yes, follow I'm, shithead steve i'm aware of shithead steve yes but brilliant brilliant stuff so i mean clearly this was at a time when you know, like we have said, uh, advertising was was probably a little unchecked. The budgets were going kind of crazy. Um, there was some great advertising done at the time of, of wacky packages. But, you know, what's also funny, too, is this explosion of tops wacky packages coincides exactly with the launch of Saturday Night Live. Mm, um, that's you know, a great a live point. parody show. So. You know, clearly there was something in that mid '70s water that people were were like saying, "Fuck you, the man." You know, we're going to have some fun at your expense. Right. Well, I don't know if people are aware of this, but a lot of times when Saturday Night Live does spoof TV commercials, they hire real TV commercial production companies to do these fake ads for them. Right. Right. For authenticity. Yes. Because that, that sells the joke more than anything else, is that they're believable, and you could actually, you, you sort of get sucked into it more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, thinking about Garbage Pail Kids, and really just some high-level takeaways that I have that I learned from just doing research on this, and of course, collecting these back in the day, back in the 80s with my brother... One of the things is strike while the iron's hot. So pop culture, as we've talked about frequently, it moves quickly. And so it's important to capitalize on a trend while it's on everyone's minds. Both wacky packages and garbage pail kids are still around today. But of course, they don't nearly have the broad appeal they did decades ago. And I think mm -hmm. the Internet and social media and all of these things are really a good reason why you know we can post something instantly that lampoons pop culture i think the drawback though is there's no physical artifact from that and i think that's one of the things that you and i love about both of these card sets yeah i would say another thing is if there's an audience that likes something there's also an audience that doesn't and they can be your audience, <laughs> right? So right, if you think right. about tops, it's like, okay, well, we're not going to sell to the people who like Cabbage Patch Kids, so we're going to sell to the people who hate Cabbage Patch Kids, <laughs> you know? And, right, and right. there is probably a bigger market for that because, again, I might not want to spend however much it was, 50 bucks or 100 bucks on a doll, but I can spend a buck or two, you know, probably at that point it was like a quarter or 50 cents on a pack of these cards. I'd actually be right. curious to see who in the end made more money overall, if it was the people selling the dolls or the people selling the cards. Um, yeah, yeah. And then other people's marketing dollars can become yours as well. And I think this is true for both Wacky Packages and for Garbage Pail Kids. Right. So the best parodies always remind someone of the original and vice versa, like we we're just talking about mm -hmm. with Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. rather than spend a ton of money to promote the card sets, all Tops did was they capitalized on the brand equity and efforts of others to move their own stuff. <laughs> Which... Uh, got cease and desist letters because they were doing that. <laughs> they did it a little too well. Yes, exactly yeah, yeah. right. But you're right. The, the closer, uh, the closer the the product flies to the sun, uh, the better that Tops is going to be there to sort of take them down a couple notches. Yeah, and I, and I think that kind of um, course correction, that pop culture course correction. I think, you know, you use the phrase "taking the piss out of." And I think it's sort of this idea of just kind of throw, but what good parody does is it throws a hand up and says, does anybody think this is as crazy as much as I do? Yeah, <laughs> right. 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 And so I think that in the case of both Wacky Packages and um, Garbage Pail Kids, I think this was just two examples of tops sort of playing the part of the the 
the individual or the group of people saying, hey, maybe we need to pump the brakes a second and just take a look around. <laughs> yeah. You know, are we being too excited about some of this goofy stuff we have here? That, that That's a great observation, Elliot. Um, I think you're exactly right. Um, certainly there were probably more people in the mass audience that uh, would like to have uh, make fun of these products than we're actually buying those products. And everybody certainly was exposed to it because it was all on national media all the time. So I think that's a good observation. Speaking of products, I think I need to amble on over to the bar and uh, see what sort of alcoholic products they might have available because my drink has gone dry. Nice. I will sachet with you then. <laughs> arm in arm to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great place to leave it. <laughs> All right, man. We'll talk again soon. Thanks.